Welcome to the Business of Race podcast, where we discuss issues of race and racism, how they impact businesses, and what employers can do to address these issues to create a healthier work environment for everyone. I'm your host, Regina newkirk Rucci, the Director of Equity for 90 Forward. And today, we are joined in the conference room by Darian Jack Jackson, the owner of Dapper D Cigars. And I will tell you, you know, Jack, you just always give me all the feels, all the energy. I try. All of it. So it's so great to have you here today. Absolutely. It's, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be on the podcast. All right. Well, before we get into it, because we got a lot to talk about. Indeed. Um, you know, I always like to just start miss the water cooler I think especially since COVID and we don't have as many in-person interactions anymore and sometimes they'll get those just fun conversations absolutely so um you know we're starting to get into like award season and all Mm -hmm. of the honors and stuff and so you definitely are epic so when they make the movie about you who would you want to play you in the movie and why well, that's a that's a very good question. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big person on actors' names. Um, I'm more of I know who Tom Cruise is. I know who Denzel is. Who Samuel Jackson is. Any other anybody else? I don't really know. I'm mm-hmm. a for, I'm more of a face guy. But you know, um, if I was to have somebody uh, play me, it had to be a very interesting character. I, I don't know if it, they, they got to be a mixture of funny and they got to be a mixture of serious because that's what I am. Um, so I would say, um, what's the dude name that made Cree? Uh, Michael Jordan? Michael Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan would be ah. it. And I think the, the why is because I think you have seen him in a full range of, videos and movies uh, up to this point that are, are very epic but but i also don't know any like light-skinned um uh, actors that mm-hmm. i could choose because he got he gonna have to he gonna have to tone it down i'm a you little lighter do, than you him. can do po- boris cujo i see i don't even know who that is <laughs> i told you i tried to warn you i tried to warn you i don't know who that you is. did mention that you i did, did mention you that did. you did <laughs> I don't like. I'm sitting here like, oh, what can I tell you that he was in that yeah. you would know? Because I'm like, he was on uh, the Real Husbands of Hollywood with Kevin Hart. Mm-mm. But oh, that's the light skinned dude, yeah. tall, tall, yeah, Faye. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. I, I don't see no movie that he's a major character in. No, hey, I, we can't. We can't have no no, no backup. Oh, we okay. can't have a backup. We gotta, we gotta, have gotta, gotta, gotta have an A lister. Gotta have an A lister. Jack is an A lister. We gotta have an A lister. But you know, playing him so. <laughs> You know what? I'll take that. I will take that. Oh, man. Um, And it's not because she looks like me, but I just love her energy. I love everything about her. I wish I could rap, but I definitely would want Queen Latifah to play me. That's dope. Right. I yeah, I I'll hail the queen. And then Queen or Regina means queen. Yeah, come on now. It's right there. I, I see I see what you did right mm-hmm. there. The, <laughs> see, and, and I really love Equalizer. Mm-hmm. I, so I'm more when it's when we get into TV shows and different things of that nature, I'm like really big in like policing, you know, military and then drugs. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know why, but I mean that's just the stigma. I love power, that's I love really snowfall. Like. Mm-hmm. But Queen Latifah's Equalizer role. I, I really like Equalizer, but that is not, she is not playing the true organic self in, in oh, Equalizer. Oh, you think she's toning it down? I think so. Like, you can sell some of the clips are like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just look at it and be like. <sighs> so you. That's so not the set you, at all, Queen you, Latifah. Yeah, but how did you feel about Denzel in the Equalizer, in the movies? Oh, Denzel, Denzel, Denzel. Okay. The movies is different. It's oh okay. The movies is different from the TV show. Mm-hmm. The TV show was like, it's like you could tell it's acting, mm-hmm. and I think the best movie and the best TV show is when you can't tell it's acting. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I got you. I got see you. See what I did there? I do. Okay. I do. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> All right, but you know, I, I'm I'm still gonna go with Queen. go with Queen Latifah. I'm go with I, the I like it. I All like right. it. I love it. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll have to talk more about TVs and movies shows later. But as we get into the podcast, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've asked you here today because you've got Dapper D's. Absolutely. The place to be if you want to smoke a cigar and have a good time and hang out with the, the homies and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think there are several people who may be considering starting a small business or at the very beginning stage, right? And being an entrepreneur can be a little tricky. It can. So I really want to talk to you about like what your journey has been as well as, you know, get some wisdom and and share from your experiences of what entrepreneurs can do to really set off their business successfully. So you run a cigar shop. Mm -hmm. Let's start there because how do you like, uh, I have like a place where people can go and smoke cigars or, or even how did that come about and how did you bring that vision into reality? So when, so I used to live uh, in Memphis and at the time uh, I was in the Navy. I served 10 years in the Navy um, and got out in 2019. During my, my, about 2017, 2016, we moved to Memphis and my wife ended up joining the military. And so I had a lot of downtime. My mother-in-law had my children. Um, and then obviously my wife was gone, um, boot camp, a school, all of this stuff. So one of the main things that I did to kind of bypass time was smoke cigars. Um, so I used to I used to be at this cigar lounge called Burning Desire, and then I started working there, and then moved up uh, from there, and then eventually I got orders to come to Jacksonville. When I got to Jacksonville, I went to a, a couple cigar lounges, and during that time, I was like, "Man, this is nothing." like what I had in Memphis. I mean, like we, we had, it wasn't a necessarily a cigar group, but we had a group of guys and, and females for that matter that would come together, have a good time, barbecue, play dominoes, smoke cigars, watch the game. I mean, we'll, we and eventually it got to the point where we'll go, uh, different outings together. We'll go to the house. Absolutely. And, uh, it was really good. And one thing that I realized that was not here in Jacksonville was an all inclusive cigar lounge that really made you feel like a family. And I don't know if it's I, I, I tell you, you know, it seems almost that Jacksonville operates in a, a, a kind of segregated mindset still um, where you don't really see a lot of mixtures of races in certain facets of uh, of life in Jacksonville. And it's, it's, it's mind blowing. I lived in I'm from Chicago. I lived in California. I lived in Memphis and I lived in Jacksonville. And mind you, Memphis is where I experienced racism for the first time ever in my life. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville is where it's like it's kind of restapled every single day. And so I said, you know, one of my main things is um, I wanted to, to, to change that narrative uh, through my cigar lounge, but it didn't come as sim- simplistic as, as it sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got out the Navy, I, I really battled with I identity, ad- identifying what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I am a, I am a very uh, bullish person. Uh, I'm a risk taker. Um, I'm very confident in myself. And a lot of the positions, I was a financial advisor uh, for First Command for a while. And then I went into an HR position with Sklar. And before you know it, I was sitting at, it was February 2020. 20 I uh, came to my wife crying I mean just bawling it's like this is this cannot be actually it was yeah I, I this cannot be what I got out the Navy for mm-hmm. and she looked me square in my eyes and I, I I believe it was really a a guy talking to me at that time and telling me uh she told me you need to go start your cigar lounge and the funny thing about it is like I didn't have a clue of how we were going to do that um and then fast forward I, my supervisor at Sklar owned a couple businesses. Um, so I had told him, I'm like, Hey, I really want to do a cigar. I said, I really want to start a business. And he was like, you, you serious? And mind you, this, this is not, uh, you know, I'm still thinking from my military cap, you don't go to your supervisor in the civilian sector or even corporate America and tell him, Hey, I want to want to start a business. And eventually I'm going to leave your company. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, I teach you. And not only did he teach me, he literally walked me through the entire part. And before you know it, he disappeared. I, I call him. I call him my angel. Um, and about last 2022, he resurfaced, sent me a picture, went ghost again. Mm. Sent me a picture of the River City location, and 
I asked him how he is doing. It wasn't mm-hmm. messing me back or nothing. Mm-hmm. Just went completely go. So now, now I sit here with two based off of God directing my path. So, so I think that's that's a it's a wonderful story, right? Because you're you it's just a career change, right? You Absolutely. Were in the military. All right, but something that you were personally passionate about, Correct. something you had experienced, something you saw a need for in the community, Correct. right? And then this vision that God's placed for you, just do this. Oh, yeah. Okay, so as we talk about this, because I heard a couple of things in there that I think are really important um, as we talk about people who are just starting for this. Number one, you went to somebody who had done it and asked for help. Correct. And Guidance. So what would you tell small business owners or anybody who's thinking about entrepreneurship as far as mentorship, learning the business, understanding business? What would you say are some must do's in that area? I think the number one thing that we get misconstrued um, in this entrepreneur realm, you know, I was talking to a, a gentleman that was in his late 40s, early 50s yesterday, and I said, The number one thing about millennials and Generation Y and everything else is millennials are willing to take risk, Mm -hmm. risk that Generation Y and baby boomers wouldn't wouldn't take because they needed the comfort net or the safety nets of their career and uh, continuous income. I would say the first thing that needs to happen before anything, before you go look for help or anything, you need to do a self or a self evaluation of self. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 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 when I say that is entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And we have came to a, a, a conclusion in society that, if you want to be rich, you start a business. That's the easiest way to be broke. Mm-hmm. And especially if you don't know what you're doing and let alone don't know the different resources that are out there to help you um, actually grow into whatever it is that you're trying to create. It's, it's, it can be deflating. It, it can be catastrophic for your life, and especially if you have a family. So the first thing first is you got to evaluate self. Mm-hmm. Um, and your your spouse needs to be 100, 110% locked in with you. The second part is um, ask for help. Um, I, think, I think the number one problem that we are facing now in the entrepreneurial realm is that people, one, are scared to ask for help, and then people – the people that can give the help has a hard time actually giving it because they feel as if somebody's going to take their idea and do what it is that you you want to do. My my biggest issue of it all is I have two mentors, the uh, mentors in the in the cigar industry. I got plenty, but two in the uh, cigar industry. They're they're some of the most successful retailers in the United States. Mm-hmm. I'm talking major businesses, multi-million dollar uh, organ, uh, operations, doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. And I have I remember, I'm, I'm one of those people that you, you're going to have to tell me no. Right? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about, um, you know, my ego. I'm not egotistical. I don't care about uh, what you think of me. If I want to know something, I'm going to ask the question. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't ask, you will never know. Mm-hmm. So I went to them one day and I was like, hey, would you guys be my mentor? I said, look, I, I know I can't compete with your business. But I want to just be able to market my business and do my business right um, and be successful at it. Um, and they was like, Absolutely. Mind you, these are the best in the business. I mean, everybody praises them. And I went there and asked them to be my mentor. And I, I not only that, but I challenged them too. Mm-hmm. I said, I, look, I need you guys to be 110% honest with me. That's what I need. I need honesty. I need the. I need to know the mistakes you made and what was the, the, the ramifications for the mistakes that you made. Well, and I think this is a really important part because we talk about the importance of mentorship. I think it's a particularly important when you're t- thinking about launching a business, mm-hmm. right? But one thing that I think is often happens is that, A, the fear factor, mm-hmm. right? Especially because why do I want to talk to somebody who's doing it? Meh. I want to talk to who's really got it going on. Yeah. But, oh, will they? I don't, I'm like, Ask, you will never know until you ask. Absolutely. But I think you also have to ask with a plan. Like you said, I need this. Yeah. Right? I need honesty. I need to know what the mistakes were. I need to know how you set this up. 
I'm going to bring these questions to you. I'm not here trying to waste your time. This isn't a feel good thing for you, yeah. right? I got real specific needs. Yeah. But if you come in with a plan, people know you mean business. Absolutely. And that changes the conversation. You know, one thing I heard, um, I, I stopped listening to The Breakfast Club almost uh, almost two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um Whatever the reason behind it is, I just stopped listening to it, started going more into books and the Bible and different things of that nature. But they said one thing. It was um, somebody had came to Angela Yee when she was on there and they wanted her to invest in her business. She asked one simple question and the person couldn't deliver. And it's one of the most idiotic things to do is to go to somebody to ask them to help you with a business and you don't have zilch outside of what was in what was in your in your mind and she asked him for a business plan and you cannot provide a business plan let alone can you provide projections or a 12-month performer you can't give none of that mm-hmm. so you want an investment based off an idea but you haven't put towards no work to try to make your idea come to fruition and the reason why People ask, I, I, I always wonder what was the importance behind a business plan because It's like, okay, I put all this stuff in there and I'm going to fluff this up and make this business sound the the best. That shows that you're willing to work. Mm -hmm. And and it shows that you have thought about how much you can make. You thought about how much you can lose. You thought about this. You thought about your market. You you did research on uh, research analysis on the the, your customer base. You did all of this stuff, which are all things you need to do to do to see if even if this is a viable. Absolutely. Idea. Right. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, because I worked with a lot of people, they're like, oh, we got to do a business plan. How are you going to do this if you don't have a plan? Because I think if you just sitting there thinking everything's going to come together, it's just going to happen. Absolutely. Uh, that's some wishful it's, thinking. It's crazy. And might as well go ahead and just empty out your wallet right now. You know, I think one of my biggest things is uh, faith without works is dead. Mm-hmm. And, and people utilize it but don't really know what it means. It's like, you know. Talk about Cat Williams. I mean, we're in a podcast room. We got to talk about Cat Williams right now. Cat Williams said something that that stood out. And I, I I had a revelation with my wife for 2024 um, on our on her birthday uh, celebration, and it came so vivid and came so clear that. We are all so stuck on how hard you got to work, mm-hmm. right? I remember when I first opened my business, I was like, man, I got to be there night and day. Day and night, man, I can't I can't sleep. I got to work. The dumbest thing I've ever heard, the dumbest thought process I ever had in my life is that, no, you're supposed to work enough to, sit, to, to set up a process and procedure for your business to run without you. Anybody mm-hmm. that's saying that the business requires them in order for it to run, you don't have a business, you have a job. Mm-hmm. Stop saying you have a business. You have somewhere you need to, you work, mm-hmm. right? That's your place of work, mm-hmm. right? Cat Williams said this. He said, I don't care how hard you work. Everybody works hard. You wake up and work hard at whatever it is that you do. I'll wake up and work hard for what, uh, whatever it is that I do. Say everybody does it. Mm-hmm. But for some apparent reason, we forget that factor. But we don't have to go and work all of these hours to grow this business because the most underpaid job in America is an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. The, un- the most underpaid. You'll never get your value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You would never make all of this money that you need to make focusing on day in and day night, day in and day out, waking up every day to go work in that business. Well, and I also think, too, right, um, if you are focused on the day in and the day out, you can't have the vision. You can't grow. You can't grow. No. You can't be beyond the nuts and bolts of what Absolutely. you're doing right now. Absolutely. And if you are in the entrepreneurial seat, that's your job. That's your job. Right. I tell my managers that all the time and my team, man, we have uh, team, uh, my, my executive team meetings every Monday. And I tell them your job is to run the day to day. My job is to grow the business. Mm-hmm. That's it. If you want my job, come get it. Mm-hmm. Because I guarantee you won't last here. Because when I look at y'all pay, when I look at all that, y'all make more money than me. Mm hmm. But at the end of the day, what is it that we're doing? Right. My end game, I don't have a 401k. Mm-hmm. People be like, you don't have a 401k? I say, like, heck no, I got a business. Mm-hmm. That's my retirement plan. Mm-hmm. That no work, then nothing's going to work. Right. You know, it has to work. Right. But I have to put in the work, work. and the process and procedures in place. So when my corporation is done and, and it's running fluidly, I can go sell it to Joe Smo. Mm-hmm. Joe Smo can come buy me out. 
Cause that's the that's the name of the game. Mm-hmm. Any business that is not wor- focused on growing and selling, then what you're gonna do when the market change on you? So I think this is a, a really good point to come to as far as traps, mm-hmm. right? Those problems, those things, and particularly uh, for entrepreneurs of color. When you think about what is the thing that you really wish you had known going into the game or the thing that has brought a lot of folks down that maybe doesn't get talked about, what would you say is the biggest potential trap that's out there? I would say the lack of information. Um, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I've, I've heard a lot of people's story. Um, I've seen a lot of people's uh, process. I've seen a lot of people out there doing great things. Um, and not only in Jacksonville, the United States. I've been blessed. A lot of the headaches that a lot of people experience, I did not experience. Um, because I don't, I don't dwell in lack of knowledge and I don't dwell in lack of uh, prepar- my preparation. Mm-hmm. I'm always prepared and I'm always going to have the knowledge. And if I don't have it, I'm going to go get it. That's always been my thing. Uh, so I would say one of the biggest things that people fail to gather is that knowledge of their, their industry. You have to understand your industry day in, in and out. And you also need to know who's the big dogs in your industry that's doing it. Mm-hmm. And you, so many times we, <laughs> so many times we worry about what's in our city. I'm sorry. And I, and I say this very candidly, mm-hmm. but there's a reason why there's multiple burger spots. There's a reason why there's multiple hotel. There's a reason why there's multiple steakhouse. There's a reason why there are multiple cigars because somebody went into that market, analyzed that market and said, there's a need here. Mm -hmm. So if you own a business and you own a food truck, there's multiple food trucks out there, multiple restaurants out there. And they're doing the same thing that you're doing. It's because they looked at your business and said, there is something that is a need that this this business is not doing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen another business come around where they didn't feel like they had a need to fulfill. Right. Just don't. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you have Walgreens across the street from CVS. So there's a, it's a need that they seen that needed to be filled. It's the reason why you'll see advanced auto parts or across the street from AutoZone. Mm-hmm. There's a need that they felt like that that person wasn't doing. Nevertheless, you need to figure out what that need is mm-hmm. and fulfill it. And if you don't do that, then you're going to get swept away with time as well as um, your customer base is changing. One of the hardest things and this is something that I had to experience and I cannot wait until this air because I'm going to I'm going to literally share this about 20 million times because I need this message to get out. There's a there's a thought process that when you own a business, you need to be the one in front. Mm-hmm. You need to be the one smiling. You need the one to be the one kissing babies, shaking hands. But you said something earlier that. Um, kind of dwells in what I just said of lack of knowledge and lack of pa- preparation. You said the the CEO is part of the growth pattern. Mm-hmm. That like you, it's not my job to water to have seeds everywhere. Mm-hmm. My see, my good job is to plant seeds in methodical areas and water them mm-hmm. and water them. And hopefully, I have a a nice coconut tree that produces coconuts. Mm-hmm. Well, if I don't do that then that's a problem, which means I can't sit in the cigar lounge and smoke like I used to, which means I don't, I can't pick up a, uh, uh, I can't go behind the bar and work a shift like I'm supposed to because the moment you start taking step, uh, moving backwards, your business does too. Mm -hmm. Your business does too. And we as people, we get selfish. We get selfish and demanding what we don't demand from everybody else, right? When it comes to small business, you demand to meet the owner. You demand to to have the conversations with the owner. You don't walk into Walgreens and say, let me talk to the Walgreens owner. Right. You don't walk into AutoZone and say, I got a problem. I want to talk to the owner. You don't walk into McDonald's and say, I want to talk to the owner of McDonald's when you have an issue. But for some apparent reason, we have we society has geared us that 
in small businesses, the owner needs to answer to everything. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. And there's no way to grow from that. And that's that's the way for society to keep you down. And that's the way for the the process to make you feel as if this is what you do to be become successful. But that's also equipping your staff who are the frontline empowerment people to do those things. Absolutely. And I think that's also one of those things that small business owners also take like, well, no, that's my responsibility. No, I did it. Right. You got to make sure you've got the right people yeah. in place so that they can and take up those conversations, handle those issues. And they have the confidence and knowledge that you've empowered them to do. Absolutely. That. And not only that, it's like, I, 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 I so we, we have something, Something good to add to your your process if you're not doing it. Um, we have I, we have end of the year uh, meetings. I mean, every major company does it. Small businesses, you know, end of the year. I don't know we're talking. It. I give my I give my staff the numbers. I give them the budgets. I give them everything that we need to change and make better in 2020, whatever the year is. And one thing I I harped on in this end of the year meeting was management empowerment. Management empowerment, management empowerment. I, when people come in and say, I have an issue, is the manager stepping up and doing what they're supposed to do? Is my staff stepping up and doing what they're supposed to? Are they giving the experience that they need to make sure our customers are satisfied with it? That we, we've come up with this false expectation of what a a good experience is, Mm -hmm. right? What happened to great customer service? What happened to making sure you had quality product ready and and, and consumable? What happened to making sure that your staff is neatly dressed and stuff like that? We lost that. Mm -hmm. And we only focus on money. And and, and, And the biggest thing that's on the consumer side, we stopped demanding it. Mm-hmm. That's how dapper these, that's my, that's my need. You know, people, people, people are trying to replicate us, um, which is flattering. I, I love it. Um, but one thing you cannot replicate is the internal work that's already been done. Right. We right. have a, we have a requirement here. When you walk into, when anybody walks into my doors, you get treated like a king and queen. I don't have to be the one that treats you like a king and queen mm-hmm. as long as it happens. Right. Right. So, I I, I mean, I, I this is a topic that we can, I mean, I, I am so passionate about this topic because it's not too many people being educated. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not too many people that are seeing the growth track. So many people are focused on the doing, doing, doing. That That's cute. Mm-hmm. That's cute. That's cute. It's a lot of businesses out here that is not making three to four hundred thousand dollars a year. They're just not. I'm talking for profit. Shoot, two hundred thousand. Right. Hundred thousand is a great year for them. That's a terrible month for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to brag about it. It's what do you want? How do you want your business to look? Right. Do you want to grow it or do you want to be content? Do you want one location do you want 20 locations? Mm-hmm. You got to figure that out. And it starts with that that knowledge and preparation. You need to be figuring that out in the beginning stages because that's going to that's gonna iron out and pay out where you walk. Well, and I'm going to take that really <laughs> as the takeaway, the big takeaway, because I think that's a huge thing, right? You And you got to start with the end in mind. And I would tell anybody that for anything that they're doing. Otherwise, you won't get there. You won't. But. So we we sort of have that as our big takeaway, but I also want to make sure that for anybody who wants to have a king and queen experience, where can they find a Dapper D's location? Where how do they go and 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 go have that that wonderful uh, cigar and be treated well and. Uh, have a great experience that you've spoken about. Well, first and foremost, uh, every time you come into Dapper D's um, cigars, it's about the experience. Um, we have quality product. We know that we have the best best humidors in Jacksonville. We know that we're not we're not talking from an arrogant standpoint. We're talking from the factual standpoint. Um, we we know we have the cleanest lounges, but we operate we operate based off a a aim. And and taking it to my fraternity uh, day, uh, days, we have we have an aim, and our aim is cigars first, ambiance second, 
and customers always. We guarantee that whenever you come into any one of our stores, you are met with top tier customer service. We're the only we're, we have a 4.8 um, Google rating on uh, for River City and a 4.9 Google rating for. Uh, St. John's, we 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 set that bar. Um, so, nevertheless, uh, go to, go first and foremost. Go to DapperDeeCigars.com. Uh, Dapper D's Cigars allow you to see everything that we have product wise, and also there's there's different. Um, different uh pages that take you to our memberships also take you to our lounge and you can literally pinpoint from there and go straight to one of our lounges we have two locations working on a third one that are open in 2024 very close to where we are um and so our, our river city location is near the airport at 725 scar marks drive suite three jacksonville florida 32218 and then we have another location in st john's in true st john's not the town center in true st john's off of 210 which is uh, 150 fountains way suite one st john's florida 32259 fantastic and we will be looking for that 2024 look yes indeed well. yes indeed all right well jack it has been such a pleasure Absolutely. to have this conversation with you i certainly hope that you will come back Absolutely. uh you have so much wisdom and knowledge and insight and really willing to share that with other people and so thank you so much for this conversation today. absolutely thank you regina for having me all right and thank you for joining us today. Please, we like to be liked, so click that like button and be sure to subscribe to make sure you get updates on every time we put out more content. Thank you so much for joining us in the conference room and we'll see you next week. Take care.